Welcome to Grace Life Church Podcast. If you would like any more information about us, please visit our website, gracelife.com.au. Mother's Day today, um, and before we get our panelists up, just want to encourage some of you here and also acknowledge that I know that um, it's usually acknowledged that maybe Father's Day is the one that's, that bears quite a lot of, um, I guess, negative impact on people. But also I want to acknowledge that sometimes mothers as well, um, that happens. And so you might be here and have, have wounds and scars that have, um, that have happened um, as a result of how you've been mothered. Um, and one of the things that Pastor Scott says quite often is a misuse of a gift um, is not a, necessarily a prerequisite to write it all up. Uh, motherhood is a gift from God. It has been misused in certain instances. Um, but my hope today and this morning is that you are inspired to see that that story can be redeemed, to be inspired to become a better mother, to also um, allow Holy Spirit, he might actually want to do some healing through you this morning um, as you hear some of these stories, these responses. also want to let you know none of these ladies are perfect. They're just sharing where they're at. They're sharing the revelation um, of God, the journey that they're going through as well. So um, we really hope that you're encouraged by their stories, um, that you're open to healing and redemption. So without further ado, if you could help me to welcome our panelists this morning, Mel, Mickey, and Sam. Would you please come up? Thank you. Feel free to grab a seat, any of these spaces. Now I'm going to use my phone because that's where all my notes are. Just given. Now, you guys can share microphone. You want the chair? You want to take the chair home? Oh, down. You don't want to be looked up to? <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Thanks, Vanessa. All right, so why don't you, uh, why don't we start with you, I guess, um, stating your name and um, maybe your favorite fruit, why not? <laughs> let's ease into this, let's ease into this, okay? <laughs> let's just relax into this. Are we um, okay, guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Awesome. Is that too loud? Let's get them too loud. No, it's fine. <laughs> just hold it close. Craig has got it all under control. Thanks, Craig. I've got a lot of trust in Craig. All right. Um, I'm Samantha. Hi, Sam. And hi, JL. <laughs> My favorite fruit. You know what? I'd probably say dragon fruit, actually, the pink one. Pink the dragon, dragon fruit. fruit. Okay. And you're a new mum? Yes. Yes, to um, little Axel. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mel. Um, I'm the mother of a neurodiverse 11-year-old and a neurotypical 8-year-old. Um, both boys. Both keep me on my toes. Wow. Um, my favourite fruit is strawberries. Cool. Hi, I'm Mickey, mother to three adult children and my first grandchild. <laughs> uh, my favourite fruit is grapes. Wow. Would have never expected that. So, let's jump straight in, okay? I would never have expected that. Um, you know, you, you, see a, you see a book and you judge it by its, you know. Um, so, let's start with um, our first question. So, we have a few questions that were sent through before so that they would get the opportunity to think through it. Um, and, um, you know, just so, because we also want to honor and, and make sure that we honor the time that we have and that these questions can also... Um, help you guys out. So, uh, the first question was, what does it mean to you to be a spiritual parent and in particular, a spiritual mother? Any of you can start. Um, I don't know, this is a, my husband told me that it's something that happens naturally and being a spiritual mother is, I think, just allowing yourself to be available and be available to the Holy Spirit and to the people around you. Mm -hmm. And I find it with my children bringing their friends into the home is just allowing to be there and 
just being and being truthful and honest with them and yeah. just being open. So we have an open home policy at home for what that, does that to mean? have an open home policy is when you come in, how you come in is how you're accepted. And regardless of the time or where you come from, it's open home. Yeah, and so your kids see you, um, and all these kids, I guess, that come in, they yeah. see you as a spiritual mum to them. And you're sharing some of the stories as well that, um, yeah. of what that's looked like? Um, it's just like if they come over and they want to spend the night, it's like asking them the question, does your mum know where you are? And yeah. going, following through and making sure that you know their mum or their parents know where they are. And then allowing them to spend the night and not being nosy and yeah. just to, if they want to talk to you, allow them to talk to you. If they don't talk to you, feed them, make them happy, <laughs> make them feel secure and yeah. move on. Great. Okay. Thank you. Lorraine Mel. Um, I forgot to mention before I'm holding this for my son's school project. Uh, this is Ben New, everybody. <laughs> Um, he had to come up here and get his photo taken. We're having awesome. adventures with Ben this Great. weekend. So. <laughs> um, so a spiritual parent, I had to really think about this. These questions really got me thinking and searching. Um, and I think what spiritual parenting looks like to me is helping someone who's less mature in their faith to mature. Um, but it's also part of who I am and what I do, um, yeah, so I'm a spiritual mum to my boys, and but you also don't necessarily have to be a biological mum to be a spiritual parent. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. What does it look like for you? So when I read the question, my mind went straight to the practical, and so I'm like, okay, so all of, like, the people I look up to, the mums and things, spiritual mums in the church, the church matriarchs and all that kind of area, um, I was like, what do I see in that that I would pick as a spiritual mother? And I came down to the servant heart mm -hmm. of a mum. So I think, honestly, I think of that a spiritual mother, and this might sound a bit controversial, but it's not. Like when you see Jesus washing people's feet, somewhere in that image I see mother is that mm -hmm. I don't know if that's weird but that could just be my personal perspective um, but I think that a lot of like even like opening your home to people um, all, all that kind of stuff I think comes from a servant heart so I really think that a lot of the core of a spiritual mother is just serving people like yeah. even back at women of worship that we did a few years ago yeah. we had a washing feet station I was like for some reason I was like I feel like that's in my mind, that's what it looks like. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, one of the things that I noticed quite, quite a lot, and I still notice as well, is about uh, about being a, um, a mother. I'm not a mother, obviously, um, but I see mums kind of stretching their capacity. It's like you you wouldn't necessarily be walking around with with that toy everywhere. <laughs> However, if your son asks, yes, I'll do it. You know, are there other instances like that where you think there's just there was just that one time I did this and you know I would have never necessarily thought that that's something I would do or that came with being a, a mum that you just thought you know what I'll just do it and the result of it was maybe you bonded with um, whoever you were mothering whether spiritually or they were your own kid obviously you got the toy but any other of those instances. left field one this one <laughs> I think um, you know with being the mother of a child with autism you're constantly doing things out of left field that you never thought you would do yeah um, I'm just trying to think of examples on the spot here um, yeah, it's kind of... Yeah. Yeah, that's... I just can't think of any examples right. on the spot. But. Yeah, that's right. Can you tell us about your 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 open home policy and what that, you know... Because that creates these kinds of opportunities, it, right? It, it, it does. And sometimes you 
do the strangest things and when you think about it you think okay what have I done like um, coming from Africa we eat a lot of strange and wonderful things and <laughs> um, often they br invite their friends over and we'll cook what we eat traditionally and their friends will be like you can see them looking at this food as if to say is this edible <laughs> You know, and then they eat it, and then the next thing you get a phone call to say, uh, we're coming over, are you making that same thing again? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's about creating new experiences or make creating memories. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think that's what the important thing is. And just allowing that to happen sort of naturally. Yeah, absolutely. Is that creating the memories. Yeah. Um, do you have any particular Bible verses you found helpful in the way that you've been a spiritual mom? Um, well, I kind of just always come back to a cheerful heart as a good medicine. Like, I know it doesn't necessarily guide on any kind of way of parenting, but I feel like if within myself... I'm portraying that. I mean, obviously there's times where it's super difficult, but I keep telling myself, spiritual heart is good medicine and crushed spirit dries up the bones. So even if I'm feeling run down mm -hmm. in that space or really overtired from nights where the baby would just want to go to sleep, <laughs> I feel like I just need to bring myself back to, because I've loved that verse since I was a child, so I just bring myself back to, um, if my heart is happy, mm -hmm. I can parent well. Um, for me, I like um, Ephesians six ten to 20, which is the armour of God. Um, my journey to motherhood was not an easy one. Mm. Um, it was clouded with a lot of anxiety and depression and then um, a lot of emotional trauma with trying to manage a child that's on the spectrum and not um, able to manage their emotions. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there was, yeah, so really severe uh, meltdowns. Um, we ended up having to put them on antipsychotics for a short period of time to help manage behaviours um, for safety of my younger son and the rest of us. So that was for a short while. So I was really doing it tough for a long time. Um, struggling, being angry with God, angry with myself, angry with my son. Um, and then... As a result of uh, uh, counteracting a spiritual mother who taught me how to do appreciation and how to listen to God's voice, it completely changed um, the way I saw my son um, and realised that, yeah, there were voices in my head that were telling me some horrendously dark lies. Um, so that verse, I look at that and that gives me so much strength and so much encouragement and I'm, like, I'm never, ever going back to where I was. Um, that is awesome, that one. And also, um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So Philippians 4.13. Um, talk about the, the spiritual mum who affected you. Um. Um, she's very strong in her faith. Um, and, you know, when I first sort of started interacting with her, I was like, oh, I'm never going to be that close to God, you know, but I'll just listen and see what she has to say. And I'm just like, wow, you know, I aspire to, to be like that. Yeah. Um, to have that strength and faith, that conviction, that knowledge. Um, yeah. Uh, loving, servant hearted, soft, gentle. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Nikki? Um, I feel I've been very blessed because I've had a lot of spiritual parents in my life, like my aunts, my uncles, they all, most of them are God-fearing. Mm. So it's, I've had a lot, and just one of the verses that like helped me through everything was Matthew six thirty three, And the Passion Translation says, I need to put my glasses on for this. The Passion, the Passion Translation says, 
So above all, constantly see God's king, seek God's kingdom and his righteousness. Then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. And um, it was put to me that whatever you ask, whatever questions you have in life, whatever it is, that verse answers it. What do you do when you're in a situation? Seek God first. Regardless, and no matter what you're going through, if you seek God first, it will answer. Your questions sort of are answered. And we've held on to this verse, not only just me, but as a family. And it's like um, my niece would phone me and I'd say, okay, what did you do? Have you brought it to God first yeah. before you found me? <laughs> I should be your last resort kind of thing. And so this is the verse that I encourage people with. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks. Um, what have you learned as a natural mum that you apply to being a spiritual mum? Um, mine would be just showing love and forgiveness and applying that and not only just, it's like more like trying to live it. It's mm -hmm. one of the hardest things to do is love unconditionally and to keep showing forgiveness. And um, I often tell the children, monkey see, monkey do. So they s learn what you do, not what you say. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Is that you, Sam? Me? Yeah. What have you learnt as a natural mum that you're transparent? By the way, I know Sam's young, but she, um, for quite a number of years, was a youth leader with us. And so this is where that, you know, being a spiritual mum, sometimes we get um, younger girls who don't necessarily have the greatest relationship with their parents. And so as youth leaders, sometimes you get to step in there and be like that unto your uncle, only a few years older, but um, she essentially started mothering before she was naturally a mum. Yeah. Good call it out. Yeah, I agree. I think that for me it's different because it was that first before natural. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the same for a lot of people, but even I think a lot of it, is just in my personality like even when I would go places with my family I'd pack stuff for my sister like just automatically I would have a set of bathers for me a set of bathers for her spare toothbrush I've got all that kind of stuff um were you going to Mickey's house <laughs> no if I went to Mickey's house I wouldn't need any of that stuff she's probably got it all <laughs> but yeah I think it happened backwards for me I guess so I was kind of like mentoring these younger people, even though I'm quite young, but anyway, um, mentoring them. And I think I learnt a lot of compassion through that because even as when I was younger, I wasn't a very compassionate person. So I think for me, it was the opposite way. So God softened my heart first for these young people so that I could do it the other way. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, that totally makes sense <laughs> and in, in some ways it's like oh yeah I wish I had it done the other way because <laughs> it might have been a little bit easier on my kids <laughs> um, but I find it really hard to separate the two things yep. um, personally for me it's um, part of who I am and I know that I cannot mother without Jesus in my life so that's how I answer that one yeah great great um, so, some of you have alluded to it, but what have you found the most challenging thing about being a... <laughs> if you can, <laughs> you know, of all the things, pick one. Um, aside from all the, the, um, the challenges in the earlier years, I think now that I've sort of come out the other side and still on the journey, of course, um, um, Finding the time to nurture your own uh, relationship 
with Jesus when you're a really busy mum. Um, you know, sometimes a week might go by and I'm like, oh, wow, I haven't actually sat down and spent time um, and really, you know, quiet time, one-on-one, reading the Bible, praying. Um, but I s- sort of start to crave that now. So I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I need to check out and have some time just to yeah, nurture my faith and see what God's saying to me. Um, so it's really challenging as a mother to find that time. Um, yeah. Yeah, thanks for being vulnerable with that. Um, I find the hardest thing of being a parent is sitting back and watching your children go through things. Um, It's just to know that um, my my strength comes from Christ and I have to pray about it and allow them to go through it because that's how they're going to grow. And that's knowing that no matter how much I talk into it or explain it, that they're still going to choose their own path and take it, yeah. you know, and um, it's just that sitting and waiting, you know, um, and being available to when they need you, if they need you, mm-hmm. and that's the hardest, um, and having adult children, it's like even harder, <laughs> <laughs> because you can actually see them going down a path that you've been down, and they're heading the same way, and you think, oh, Lord, no, not that way. You know, and that's all I could, you can do as a parent. Yeah. Wow. Um, I guess for me it's probably similar in terms of seeking God. Um, I think a lot of things I try to do myself, I don't know, I don't know why, but, um, and I have to remind myself to actually seek God. And I think I do find a little bit of peace in like, I guess, I think it was a revelation I had years ago that in the Bible, the relationship for like men and women with God, I feel like it's slightly different. So you see a lot of men in the Bible going out, climbing mountains, seeking God, all that kind of stuff. But I feel like the women, it's evident that God comes to them quite often. Um, so I feel like, um, obviously, I'm not excusing not seeking him because you've got to do that first. <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to say. But I feel like a little bit more comfort in knowing that I don't have to leave um, Axel and my house to go out and seek and find him in mountains and, like, fields and whatever. I can actually do it while I'm doing all that kind of stuff. I feel like it's a lot easier for me to access God when I'm washing dishes and I've got worship music on, like while I'm on the go doing mum things. Um, That was just a revelation I had in myself that I feel like, well, hold on, like multiple times in the Bible, I see God coming to these women, like, and they're not really doing anything. They're just chilling at home and they're having these mass revelations. I probably had this revelation at home, Um, (laughs) but you see men, like you see Moses and stuff going out and seeking and going far and everything. But I feel a little bit of comfort in that, knowing that I don't, I don't know, I'm I'm trying to make it sound like I I can seek him, like in, I don't have to go out and do a lot. I made it sound like I don't have to do anything. (laughs) That's not what I'm trying to say. So you're not joining the hiking (laughs) interest club? No. (laughs) Um. The dishwashing club works. (laughs) The dishwashing (laughs) club, it does work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in, in saying that then, so what have you found the most rewarding about being a mum? And if I could tack on something else, who is your biggest encourager? Who encourages you the most? I'd love to hear that. Yeah. I'd have to say my mum. But if you asked me when I was 16, I'd have said no way. <laughs> but <laughs> That's <the> reality. But <laughs> definitely my mum has encouraged me. Um, my mum's sisters as well that have played a big part in my life. Um, I could probably, the name, the list is endless. Um, But what's encouraging is when you see what's been passed from generations in your own children or in children that have come through your life doing the same thing. And that's rewarding. You know, 
people have sort of seen the legacy live on. You know, um, things that we were taught by our mums that are uh, built within Christ and that going forward, I think that's rewarding. Um, I feel what's been most rewarding for me recently is just seeing God move. Um, so I'll give you an example. So my um, oldest son, he had someone say something very awful to him at school. He was very upset about it. Um, and he's very sensitive. He struggles with self-esteem and all the other things. Um, so I just, you know, normally sometimes I just try and, like, deal with it on my own. But I'm like, no, I'm going to tackle this. I'm going to use the Bible. Um, so I said to him, do not be anxious about anything but in every situation with prayer and thanksgiving. And he's like, Mom, it's a miracle. And I said, what? And he goes, that same verse was in my homework grid this week. Wow. And I was like, oh, that's so awesome. So we were just exploring his feelings a little bit about, you know, the other person, why they may have said what they said and all that. And he goes, oh, God doesn't love me, Mum. And I said, why do you think I read you that verse? And he goes, because you saw it in my homework grid. I said, no, I had no idea that was in your homework grid. And he goes, God is in my life. And his face lit up. And I said, you betcha he is. And he goes, I'm so happy. That's and so I'm great. like, oh, man, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. <laughs> Praise God. That's great. Yeah. Uh, I feel like the, well, I mean, on the surface, probably the most rewarding thing is when someone says, my baby looks like me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, that feels pretty good. <laughs> um, but I think more so um, it would have been when I was in youth, all that kind of stuff. I can see the kids when they start and when they finish and the person they've become and, you know, um, letting them go into the world, I guess, as fresh 18-year-olds <laughs> um, and then seeing what comes back, you know, um, and that was only a small aspect. I saw them maybe four hours a week, maybe five, sometimes just that help on twice a week made such a difference for them. Um, yeah, I mean, just watching them flourish, I guess. And so I'm excited to see that yeah. with my own kid. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, and what would you say to somebody who's, I guess, hesitant or unqualified? Like, I'm not doing this whole spiritual mum thing well. Um, you know, the general rule of thumb usually is if you're over a certain age, younger people tend to kind of look at you and go, oh, they're doing that thing, so that's permission for me. And so here and you're over 18 or, you know, you seem a lot more mature. Um, and we do have young people around as well, and they are looking up at you. Uh, but you might struggle with this idea that, hey, I'm, I might be a spiritual mum to someone. Mm. You know, that's interesting thing to think about. So what would you say to people who are struggling with it, um, feel unqualified? Um, well, I can say that I probably feel unqualified because of how young I am um, and how young I was when I started, I guess. Um, but I had... Reading that question, I literally just heard God say, it's actually not up to you at all. In the most respectful way possible, <laughs> it's not your choice. <laughs> yeah, like Jay said, you're going to have people looking up to you no matter what you do. And I think, I think as you just have God at the center, Jesus in your heart, you can lead that way. Um, and the outcome will be great. But I don't, it's definitely not something you choose. It's a calling, I guess, so. Um, I would also say that, you know, when I first got these questions this week, I was <laughs> like, oh, well, I think I'm unqualified. <laughs> um, uh, I think um, nobody's perfect. Um, you know, we've all... So what we bring to being a spiritual mother will be different for all of us because of our life experiences. Um, and 
I feel that you need to have um, a heart for Jesus and a love for others and the rest will follow. It, it'll just be a natural thing. Yeah. Um, and you may not have all the answers um, for someone, but if you are prepared to sit with someone and, and share your stories, that in itself can be really powerful. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Ron. Um, I think for to encourage people to... I think it's not only mothers that can do that, but generally um, anybody. Well, none of us are qualified. Uh, none of us are will ever be prepared. I don't know one mother that can say they were ready when their first baby was born. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you ever know what you're in for. <laughs> and I think spiritually, it's the same thing. It's your willingness to be and to be available. And that's all you need to go is with the willing heart to help. And I think that's the only way it can be. And God will do the rest. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Um, was there anything else that you haven't shared that you're like, I think I need to say this? Okay, I've got, I've got something. Last week in praise and worship, um, I had, I don't know what you call it, whether it's a vision or a, um, but anyhow, I was sitting in praise and worship and I had the thought of creation come. We God was in the beginning, and in his hand, he had everybody's soul that is past for that's due to come in his hand, in his protection. And I thought about each mother that has the baby forming in, his, in their womb, and God has taken the soul that he created at creation and placed it in the mother's womb so that it can form. And I think like for a God to love me so much that he thought about me so many millions of years ago and to place me for a time such as this. And it was that that like made me think that this is just awesome and regardless whether it's mothers, fathers or whatever, it's not about your age, your age, your soul was created at creation. So the fact that Sam's a young mother, it's irrelevant. Her soul is as old as mine. <laughs> thanks, thank you. Thank you. Hey, why don't we thank our panelists? You've been great. Yes, on the chair. Um, Before Garfield prays a blessing over our mothers, um, would you please stand? Mothers. <laughs> Whether you are, you've been, your spiritual mom, you hope to be, we'd love for you to stand with us. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to applaud you. We're going to thank you. Uh, I know it's a small gesture, but allow us to honor you um, in our lives. So could we just do that? Just a, a massive applause. <laughs> Would you pray? Well, Father, this morning we have heard from three moms who are even in, in different seasons of their motherhood. And we've heard words this morning, Lord. And we want to ask you this morning that you put your hand upon the power packed words, the communication that we've heard, we ask that you put your hand upon it, that it will not return unto you void. We thank you, Lord, that they have placed their whole being in you. And in that, Lord, we can see that there will be impact in the lives of their children. We thank you, Father, that they put their lives in your hand. 
We ask, Lord, that not only the words that they've spoken over their children, but the words that they will continue to speak over their children will bring life. Because in your word, we have heard that there's life and death in the power of the tongue. And we thank you for the gift of motherhood that has the capacity to speak life. And Father, this morning, we know that this can be an emotional time. We know that mothers are not perfect. We know that there have been mistakes made in the, pa in the past in the lives of the women here this morning. But Father, we thank you that each day there's, a new, there's an opportunity for a new beginning. You have the capacity to make all things new. And we ask, Lord, from this day forth, no matter what the women have been exposed to, no matter what moms have been exposed to in their childhood, that as of today, Father, that there will be a new day, that there will be a new beginning, and that you will continue to heal the mistakes of the past. Lord, thank you for moms. Thank you for the way they've been designed. Thank you for what we've heard this morning. And we ask that you just anoint it. That it will glorify you and bring life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We hope you've enjoyed listening to this podcast from Grace Life Church. For more information about us or any of our services, please visit our website at gracelife.com dot com dot au